Good morning, Ted. How are you today? Good morning. I'm fine. Thank you. Good. Ted Weaver. Yes, We've sir. probably seen you walking up and down the halls, but who in the world is Ted Weaver? So Ted Weaver, probably the biggest thing is he's married to Pam Weaver. All right. <laughs> and by the way, 40 years today. Or 40, 40 years. Not today, 40 years this year. 40 years this year. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. So it is awesome. I got a story about that later. Okay. <laughs> uh, we attend church here with our son, Kebron, and we attend second service, and we usually sit back over there and... Uh, when you walk the aisle or walk the hallways, you, you'll, you'll notice Kebron. He stands out. Um, our daughter, Erin, also attends church here every once in a while. Yeah. She's the senior adult minister director. We have two older sons, one in San Antonio, one in Little Rock, Arkansas, with five grandkids. Well, so where were you born? Dayton, Ohio. Or no, let me rephrase that. Uh, Fort Worth, Texas. Grew up you know, in, that's quite a, you know. <laughs> yeah, I grew up in. I mean, I know you wouldn't remember, but. <laughs> it was a long time ago. <laughs> okay. So you're born in Fort Worth. Born in Fort Worth. Uh, grew up in Dayton, Ohio. Lived the last 35 years in Texas. Was named after a plumber. How about that? Really? No kidding. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, Mom and Dad had a good friend. Mm -hmm. His name was Ted. My older brother never ceases to stop reminding me that, hey, Ted, you were you were named after the plumber. Yeah, wow. So, so um, you're growing up, was your growing up uh, uh, in, in a Christian home, in a life of faith, not in a life of faith? And tell, very, tell us a little bit about how you've grown. Yeah, very much in, in the Methodist church. I have five brothers. Yeah. Uh, we attended Methodist churches. Uh, Mom and Dad would walk down the aisleway, and there was Jim, Bill, Dick, Ted, John, and Dan, all in duck order. And, and we'd go sit on the front row, and, and Mom would sing in the choir, and, wow. and we were very much in the Methodist church. So was there, was there ever a time for you when, you know, you got out on your own and you just kind of didn't want to do that anymore? Mm. No. Really? That's terrific. <laughs> no. I, Dude, we, you're, you're, better uh, no than, you're better than most of <laughs> no, us. No, yeah. not at all. Yeah. No, we were always uh, brought up in the method. Now, some of my brothers have strayed a bit. I will point that out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they went to those other religions, the Presbyterian, yeah. oh, uh, the, you yeah. know, Church of Christ, things God like helped that. God them. But, yeah, <laughs> yeah sure. Mom really had a problem with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So... So as someone who's been in it a long time, in fact, been in it for a lifetime, have there been experiences that, um, you know, really shaped you? You know what I mean? Are there yeah, mountaintops yeah. that made that made the whole trip easier? Yeah, for you? so a long, long time ago, this is like I said, I've been married 40 years, long time ago, I heard a Methodist pastor, Charles Milliken, talk, uh, and he talked about the importance of being available and being in the moment and taking opportunities when you had opportunities. And I thought, well, that's really good, and I want to try to do that. And so what, what transpired is, so Pam and I, like I said, we've been married 40 years, but it always hasn't been a happy 40 years. Mm -hmm. So we went to a marriage retreat, mm -hmm. and at that marriage retreat, we reconnected. Mm -hmm. And we found something that we were missing, and we... Uh, committed, recommitted to each other. And after that retreat, things changed. It was a remarkable experience. It was a retreat that I'm glad I went on. Right. So, was one it, thing. Was it hard for you to go on the retreat? Oh yeah, Pam wanted to go and, and me, the guy, didn't want to go. Sure. But we, we did end up going. Yeah. Okay. And, and it was a, it was a life-changing experience. And other retreats, so I've been on a mass retreat and I got to experience God's grace from Christian people like I'd never experienced before. Yeah. And then we were foster parents for a while. Uh, five years, we had a little girl named Caitlin, and we had her, sorry, sorry. we Take had her for a year and a half, and uh, she was going to get adopted by a friend of ours, and she moved out of our house into our friend's house, and she was a foster kid at the other house. So anyway, we went on a foster parent retreat. Okay. Okay, and, and so it's been a year and a half since I've seen Caitlin. And 
the parents are there, and I see Caitlin swimming in the pool with floaties on like little kids always do. And I walked up to the edge of the pool, and the mother was there, and she says, Caitlin, do you know who this is? And the son was out, and she looked at me, and her eyes squinted, and she said, that's, that's my daddy. Mm. Wow. That's my daddy. And you know what? Had I not been on that retreat, I wouldn't have, expect, I wouldn't have experienced that moment of God's grace in my life. And, and, you know, it still gets me today. That was 15 years ago. 15 years ago, I, I still remember Caitlin saying, that's my daddy. Yeah, yeah, wow. You know, I think, so, so we, this year we've clearly picked the right guy. I, I, didn't, I didn't know these stories, but I know that we picked you to shape up and, and do the men's retreat. <laughs> we absolutely got a thoroughbred. Well, um, that's, that's really awesome. Um, you know, we, we, we give God thanks for the, you know, for these, for these uh, I guess, I don't know if they're highlights because some of them are heartbreaking, but they're formative, right? They're formative things that really? happen. So tell, but tell, us, so tell us a little bit about, because we do have a retreat coming in just have, uh, a couple, we three have, weeks, right, for, for men. So tell me a little bit yeah, about we, that or tell all of us a little bit about that. Yeah, we have a men's retreat coming up. And uh, as a group, we were, we were sitting kind of talking about men's retreat and what do we want to do. And uh, Kyle Overmeyer was on, on the planning team. And, and mm -hmm. Kyle says, you know what? Uh, we were brainstorming ideas, and he says, here's what really gets me. He says, I have Facebook friends that are at war with each other. And probably many of you have experienced that, where there is just so, so much discontent and uh, disagreement about almost everything. And he said, oh, by the way, I've been in this church for about five years, but I really don't know a whole lot of people. And, and the thought was, okay, if that is the issue for Kyle, maybe we should focus on that as the issue for our men's retreat. Okay. So we, we basically came up with a series of topics that are controversial topics, and the idea is we want to talk about how do we as Christians address those confrontational topics and be a light, be a healing salve on those things where, where we have an opportunity to do that. So our topics are race, socioeconomics, science and technology, and gender. And we have a really good, good group of people coming to lead us. We, yeah. We've got a, a professor from Marion University coming to talk about science and technology. Um, we've got a former uh, family lawyer slash translate that to divorce lawyer, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Turned, meth, turned minister, mm -hmm. uh, coming to talk to us about gender. We've got Terry Cummins, who's a member of our church, Marion County prosecutor, coming to talk to us about the socioeconomic issues that we face. We have Dr. Charles Ware, who is the president of Crossroads uh, Theological Seminary, coming to talk to us about race, and he's a published author. We have John Hill coming to talk to us about what separates us from God, because that's what we're kind of talking about, is what separates us from each other. And so uh, we've got a great group okay. of speakers. So this is Any Man. Any Man. And it's, it's held really nearby, just probably five, six miles away. Yeah, right? just the Jewish campground over by the Traders, Traders Village over there. Yeah, Traders, there. the Creamery, the over creamery. by Traders Point Creamery. Yeah. It, it's Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. You can come Wednesday, you could come, I'm sorry. Okay, good. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. <laughs> you could come Friday, you could come Saturday, you could come all three days. Yeah. It, it, we're pretty flexible. We have a, also a team building exercise planned Saturday, uh, trying to get to Kyle's request of how do I meet guys here at the church? How do I build relationships with others? Okay. Well, I, I know, having been there, that there's also an awful lot of stuff to eat that we shouldn't eat, but that yep. we really like to eat. Yep, yep. Uh, there will so be it's food. a great retreat. First of all, we're, Ted, thank, thank, uh, thank you for, well, I guess thank, thank you to God for you and Pam landing in this congregation. 
we're so glad that you're part of it. We're glad to be part of your journey. We're glad that you are, are feeding our journey as well. And um, good luck on the retreat. If anybody would want to let you know they're coming, how would they do that? There's a sign-up table in the narthex. I'll be standing out there. There's also some pamphlets that we have that I can that we can share with you and give you a little bit of the bio Excellent. of the speakers. Excellent. Friends, Ted Weaver.